you have any ideas on how idealism might represent itself in medicine? If, yeah. if Descartes had said, hey, by the way, it's mind actually. And we said, okay, because we're not philosophers, we'll just go by that assumption. What would medicine look like? Yeah, that's that's a very tough question. I mean, I, I was first of all um, going to get clear about the word means because idealism has many different uh, meanings, many different schools of thought. Uh, there is Platonic idealism. There is uh, absolute idealism. There is panpsychistic idealism. On and on and on we go here but the what they all have in common i think is that mind or consciousness uh, is fundamental now you know to stretch it a little bit more subjective idealism absolute idealism panpsychistic -psych idealism mind is the only reality and anything that you see that you believe to be physical is just a phenomenon of consciousness. Um, now, I think that you know that this becomes extremely sort of difficult for the scientific viewpoint to sort of take in seriously. You know, to simply view the physical as a phenomenon of mind, as some kind of construction of mind, um, because we've had such success since De Galileo, Copernicus, Darwin, in describing the world as physical mechanisms. And so I don't think we're ever going to get away from that, um, that, that the, the scientific point of view is going to command our attention because of its success in terms of uh, physical explanations, even though fallible and corrigible. Uh, now, you know, getting back to the, your question here, which I think is a very difficult one, how, how would a change of philosophy here inform uh, medical practitioners or medical education? And, you know, and, and I think it just goes back to this same point I was trying to make before, you know, that, that medicine is, cannot be, strictly speaking, just confined to uh, treatment of the physiochemical mechanisms. Um, I think I think that our very best doctors are the ones that that care for the whole person and re recognize, you know, a strong element of idealism there in terms of the importance of consciousness. Uh, treating consciousness sounds a little funny. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I think I, I think I understand where you're going with that. Yeah. I mean, the the view I take, rather than treating consciousness, the way I see it is that if there were more emphasis on mind, regardless of what the final conclusion may be, I, I'm not as interested in that, but I'm more interested in the journey and the path. If there were more interested, more interest and more, um, I guess, consideration of the importance of mind, whether primary, secondary, equivalent, um, I think what would happen is by paying more attention to this, our senses would refine, mm -hmm. our, our perception would refine, our, our thoughts would refine. And I think many of the things that we see in other traditions, you know, there are entirely other models of anatomy in China and India, for example, that are completely unrecognizable mm -hmm. to that anatomy textbook I have back there. And to me, that's because the mind is developed differently. It's perceiving in a different way. I don't think anybody's making up anything for centuries, you know, when they're, when they're drawing these diagrams. So that to me is the benefit of that to see, um, and perhaps going beyond the idea of dualism of mental and physical, perhaps we don't have to name it. Perhaps the, the shared measured element of mind is what we call physical, which is fine. We can call it physical, you know? And so I think that, that an area of possibility and increased perception potentially opens up. At least that's been my own experience. And that's what I hope for healthcare, because ultimately, whether we're talking about medicine in India, China, United States, or anywhere else, we're all dealing with homo sapiens. Yeah. And so we should be able to agree on a model of human anatomy. Um, and what is the path to get there? I think it's through bringing more of consideration of mind into the picture.